Hey guys, uh, I know it's been a while since I got a video out. Uh, I've been really busy doing uh, some things for for father and everything like that. But guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a minute. But uh, this this whole time that I've been off, kind of off of YouTube here, I still check my personal messages and all that kind of stuff. And I try to get back to to uh, most of them. I don't get back to all of them because I just don't got the time to do so. But uh, during this time off, kind of kind of time off. A lot of things have been going on. Uh, volcan volcanic activity has significantly increased at the beginning of this year. Now it may it may level off or it may go back down, but it'll rise again because that's just it's it's a normal pattern that's going on here at these end times. Uh, the weather hasn't changed. We're having just uh, there's as of as of right now there's 1,100 uh, record highs throughout the United States alone. Okay, we're not talking about any of the other nations. Just in the United States alone. Uh, the farmers in the northern part of the United States are tripping out. They don't know should they go ahead and plant the seeds now uh, because it's basically spring type weather or should they wait and do it in a normal spring season or you know they don't know what to do because of the climate changes and uh, the various things that the scriptures talk about that would come to pass in the, the final generation as things begin as time begins to uh, come to its conclusion and uh, the restoration of all things takes place. Uh, you still got underwater volcanoes like mud volcanoes and stuff like that. Underwater uh, submarine volcanoes are going off creating new land again. Scripture tells you that when everything is said and done and after earth has gone through its travails and after uh, its birth pains and every, after everything said and done that the earth will no longer have any seas. There will be no more seas. Okay, So you're going to have submarine volcanoes coming up uh, erupting and uh, displacing water and moving water you're going to have uh, the the uh, climate's going to change because it's going to start moving the waters around getting it out of the oceans uh, the, uh, as the underwater volcanoes and submarine volcanoes and mud volcanoes and things like that begin to uh, continue to go land will begin to form above the water and more and more land will begin to form the waters will be moved around uh, you still got the whole post glacial rebound thing going on where the ice is melting in both the northern and southern or both the north pole and the south pole both are melting and uh, winter summer really doesn't matter it's still melting and you've got also got volcanoes going off in uh, Iceland and so forth and so on which is melting even more ice and so you still got water weight shifting around uh, the planet and all these kind of things going on as well but your weather patterns are going to change and the reason that the weather patterns are changing besides the post glacial rebound is because of what man is doing now if you go back to Genesis and you read that there was no man to till the ground okay the water came up from the earth itself and like a mist kind of say you know but it came up and it watered the face of the ground or the face of the earth okay because the earth the word earth is literally the ground the, the dirt and, and the rock and the, so forth and so on man sinned man began began to till the ground man began to destroy the earth okay when you till till the ground what happens first and foremost you bring up all of the weed seeds right well once the weed seeds are at the surface and they receive water they begin to grow then you got to bring in the chemicals to kill out the weeds right now you've got a problem now you've got chemicals in the ground which these chemicals turn to salts and salts destroy roots and roots destroy plants and so forth and so on so now you've got to bring in chemical fertilizers to overcome the chemicals that you put in uh, in the pesticides and herbicides to kill out the weeds and you've got this never-ending process of destruction uh, that you where you're always having to overcome the last thing that you did and, and every year you got to add more fertilizer more pesticides more herbicides and all these things okay that's just the first part that's just because the weed seeds have made it to the surface because of course we've tilled the ground so the next thing that comes in after you till the ground is what all this all the all the soil okay now your top soil the very top surface of your soil is where all the nutrients all all the uh, minerals and all these things that 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 the plants uh, that your your food plants and and fruit plants and so forth so on all your plants they need this topsoil right but when you till the ground it brings all this stuff up and it breaks it up 
and then what happens is right now uh, you know we're, the winds have been the, the four corners the winds have been released I mean we're getting uh, some some people uh, some nations call them gales uh, some nations call them Santa Ana winds and so forth and so on but you're getting these you know all the way up to 170 mile an hour winds at this point and you know they're going to get worse we're going to be getting 200 mile an hour winds uh, sooner or later maybe this year maybe next year maybe the year after I don't know but it's coming and um, these winds come across this tilled up ground and it blows away all of your topsoil all of that rich organic mineralized nutrients is all blown away and what doesn't get blown away by the wind the rain comes in and then all of that topsoil that has been tilled goes into the creeks and into the rivers and washes away and so what happens is you have no topsoil left and it takes you know you know in nature it takes a hundred years to produce one inch of topsoil okay when we come in here until the grounds and the winds blow through two or three inches are wiped out in a matter of hours when these flooding rains come through four or five inches of topsoil gone in a matter of hours Okay, so we're destroying the planet, and that's what's going on. Okay, that's just from tilling the ground. Okay, at this point, we have eliminated literally around 53% of all of the uh, forest on this planet. Well, what a forest does, it serves multiple purposes. First of all, a tree is a pump. Its roots go down deep into the ground and picks up the groundwater, and it brings it up into the leaves, and the leaves drop it back to the ground, and it's a continual cycle. It's always raining in a, rain, in a, in a forest. It's constantly raining in a forest. Okay, go out to any forest, and you'll get this light mist drizzle type stuff, and you'll notice that the ground's always damp. Okay? Okay, but when you remove the forest, okay, for another thing that the forest does, not only is it a pump system that continually recycles water, you know, from the ground back up into the air, drops it back down to the ground, which falls on the plants that are down below, and so forth and so on. But forests also take these, you know, four and five hundred mile an hour winds, and, and it becomes a resistor, causing the wind to slow down. On the back side of the forest, the wind's coming out at, you know, four or five mile per hour. Okay, forests serve a significant purpose. Not only is it home to habitat or uh, habitats to various uh, wildlife and animals, but it, it, it blocks the wind, it stops the wind, it stops the erosion, it stops all that kind of stuff, right? And what we're doing is going in here and wiping it all out. And then these powerful low pressure systems come right through any continent because there's no forest left. It just moves right on through. No problems. It doesn't get affected. It doesn't get slowed down. Nothing changes. And it just is extremely powerful because, you know, it's just like it's being over the ocean. There's no resistance. There's no forest, no nothing in the way to slow it down. And so what we're doing is we're destroying it, we're destroying the planet, but such is the consequence of sin. What people have not yet figured out is that the Son of God, the Word of God was made flesh, dwelt among us, and he said on the cross, it is finished. Okay, this is the restoration of all things. Now, I've already made a video about returning to the Garden of Eden. Okay, here's what we're going to do, guys. Here's one of the projects I've been working on for Father uh, here lately. Okay, this is in the United States. I'm not going to give the actual uh, location or anything like that. But I want you to see, okay, this is the border here, the county road here. And then you got this here and all this kind of stuff. Okay, this is the border of this project uh, that I'm working on. Now, this is the way the land looks, okay, and this is the way the land is. It's completely dead. First of all, over here on this piece of property, you can see the grounds tilled up. And you can see the erosion and the tire marks and everything else that's going on due to the fact that they're tilling the ground and destroying the earth. Okay, what this is, guys, this is a scar. This is a scar on earth. It's, the earth is scarred. Man has scarred the earth. 
okay now let's go back over this property here and I'm, I'm going to show you what what's been going on here now there's no water here there's no uh, electricity there's no nothing on this property now now there is water and so forth so on I'm gonna explain all this now you gotta remember that Texas is, has went through its most severe drought in recorded history uh, right is that correct everybody knows this by now the worst right and yet we have water on this land believe it or not why because we've returned to the Garden of Eden we're restoring the earth we're giving earth back its abundance its prosperity you know all this all this stuff okay we're returning it back to the garden why because it is finished that's what he said he, and then what else, what else does the scripture says scripture says okay father said to the son he says sit here at my right hand this is after he's been crucified and what have you and he's already went into the belly of the earth and preached the gospel to the dead and then has come back up and lived on the earth for a couple more days here you know uh, introducing himself to various people to let them know that hey I'm still alive and so forth and so on and then he ascended up to the right hand of the father and father said sit here at my right hand until okay so here's son he's gonna be sitting here at the right hand of the father until okay father says sit here at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool okay he's not returning guys until the the enemies of his have been made his footstool we are supposed to be restoring things but of course you know everybody's caught up in religion whether it's uh, uh, Baptist or Catholic or if even if it's Buddhist or uh, you know it, it doesn't really matter guys if it's Christianity that's still a religion if it's atheist a belief in no God that's still a religion okay you gotta come out of the religions as I've said I don't know what a zillion times you gotta get out of the religion and back into the word and back into the truth and you gotta restore the word back to the truth so you know how to live and how to how to function in these last days why because he told you to prepare he told you to get ready and he told you all the things that are going to be happening and why they're going to be happening one because man's going to turn his face on god mainly um, the house of israel or israel as, as most people know it in the english tongue but in the hebrew tongue israel uh, is is going to turn their backs on on their god and they're going to forget their god and they're going to forget who they are and um, as all this begins to take place, they're also going to be destroying the earth. Okay, and not just the Israelites or, or the Hebrews, but all the people on the planet are going to be doing this kind of thing. Okay, but you got to understand that he, what what Christ did on the Christ, what on the cross, what Messiah did on the cross, guys, is he said it is finished. Everything's done, and now he's sitting at the right hand waiting. The right hand of the Father, sitting there waiting until his enemies are made his footstool. Okay. Also understand that there's going to be no more seas. We've already discussed that. There's not going to be any more seas. What's going to happen is the entire earth is going to be earth. And there's going to be ponds, lakes, rivers, creeks, and so forth and so on. And, and the water, again, will be coming up and from the ground and uh, watering the face of the earth or face of the ground. Okay. It's going to return back everything's going to be restored so what what we have here this is this is the, the plot of land before we got started and we uh, first thing we did was we went in here and we started uh, building these ponds and here's the first pond that was built and it was built down here okay why because uh, these droughts and these various things that are going to be going on are going to continue to go on in various ways and shapes and forms. Okay, sometimes it's going to be super severe, sometimes it's going to be flooding, and everything's going to be going back and forth. So you're going to need to have some way to store what little bit of water comes down if you're in a drought area. If you're in a flood zone, which can swap around at any given point in time and become a drought area, okay, because we're in we're in earth changes or climate changes or global changes here so at any given point in time even though you're you're getting flooded right now you could turn around and be in a midst of a drought okay so you've got to have a way to store water and also a way to release the water when the floods come okay you've got to spill your the, the you've got this is what the garden of eden was all about it had two rivers running through it so let's get the rivers on here had two rivers coming down through it right two rivers here's one and here's one coming down through it and, and and go back and read about Genesis and about the garden and what was going on. Also, what people don't real, realize, the Garden of Eden is not um, tomato plants and so forth and so on. The Garden of Eden was trees. Trees. Why? Trees block the wind. 
they also drop leaves which become topsoil okay uh, forests are, are are so critically important it's unbelievable but nobody gets it they won't go back to the word and realize what was going on I mean if you go back and you realize when the plagues hit Egypt and all the rivers and all the lakes and all the waters were cha changed the blood it tells you specifically how they got fresh water okay and that's a hint on how you're going to get fresh water go back and read and what what they did to get fresh water okay so you're gonna need well systems or water you're gonna have to dig near standing or moving water okay the earth will filter that water the earth itself the ground the rock the dirt the, the clay all the stuff that's down underneath the earth filters the water deposits it in your well and you've got pure perfect clean water without the herbicides without the pesticides without the all the chemicals that they're spraying in the in the chemtrails and so forth and so on Okay, now, so it had the two rivers coming through, and it had trees. So you're going to have to get trees and stuff like that. But here's the first pond that we put in. We put it down here when it's a low, a low part of the land. Okay, but that's not going to help anything. It's at the lowest point. What you've got to do is create a water tower like you have in your cities so that you have high-pressure water for showers and so forth and so on. And, and so what we did, let me see here if I can find it. Give me one second here. This is we we added this right here. This is the highest point on this property. I just zoomed in a little bit, sorry. This is the highest point on this property. And a piping system comes out of this and can can now water anywhere on any of this property, any place with more water pressure than you have at in your at your shower head in your bathroom. Okay, because the highest point and water collects up here at the highest point and then it's, it can be distributed anywhere the next thing we did is we went in and we made uh, the moat pond which is a pond with an island in the middle and then there's a moat let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit on that we've got what we did we put a moat all the way around uh, this area here which will become a normal garden as you know gardens today which is like cabbage lettuce tomatoes cucumbers and so forth and so on okay and it will always have water from underneath coming up and what is it doing watering the face of the earth that's what you get the fog that comes up off of the, off of the pond and off of the moat and cut, cuts across the gardening area okay and and there's a cover in there also we created this massive hill here with a uh, built-in um, kind of a storm shelter in case there's ever you know tornadoes come rolling through or if you have a CME come off the earth because the scriptures tell you that that the Sun will come and and uh, sorry I had a phone call anyway the Sun will come down and burn men and and yet people the men will still still will not repent for what they instead they're gonna curse God for it okay so you're going to have to get underground when that when when they when the Sun reaches down and burns men you're gonna to have to be able to get under the ground and so we built a storm shelter into again he told you to prepare for all these things and he told you do not be deceived on what's coming and be ready and be prepared okay and so we have a hill here that is about 20 foot tall uh, we completely built it we took all the dirt from that was that were from around the pond here and we built uh, the the mountain here or the hill whatever you want to call it and we built a storm shelter into it we also put in these roads here and this goes down here and there I think there are uh, donkeys and stuff that are going to be down in here there's a barn to store things temporarily until we get other things set up um, then we went in and um, put in a low pond right here this is another low section just like down in here okay and we put another low pond and again what that does is it saturates the ground at the lower levels so that these ponds up here will fill up a lot easier when the ground is saturated also we put in a, a uh, 
a little trough right here and that way if it, uh, the weather the, the climate cycle changes and the drought ends and the floods begin all the water is relieved into the river system or into the creek system and taken out to the ocean eventually I mean it got a long way to go but it get down to the ocean and and there's no flooding that's going to occur on this land so during a drought it holds the water and it's it's just like in the Garden of Eden and, and everything the mist comes up and waters everything the face of the ground uh, there's forest back in here which eventually uh, as as the money's available they're going to go in there clear out a lot of that forest and they're going to begin to plant the fruit trees and the, and the various things again the tree of life the tree of knowledge of good and evil the tree 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 of all the trees you may eat okay the garden garden is supposed to be a food forest okay just all trees and then under the trees that's where you're supposed to have your potatoes and tomatoes and cucumbers and watermelons and so forth and so on underneath of the trees where they get a little bit of shade from you know to be blocked from the droughts and so forth and so on and what I'm what we've done here is we've literally we've recreated the Garden of Eden and then we've got the troughs that are down behind you know this 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 brown area is all downhill from this pond down to the trough then this trough is underground and then this is up above ground about five feet and it goes downhill to the next trough this trough is underground and this hills up about five feet and it drops down and all of it if, if it comes a huge flood all of it is relieved out of here and into the creek system if it's a drought all the water is stored in this pond this pond this trough this trough and these are all fruit trees and uh, uh, nut trees and all sorts of food did various type of food trees and so is all of this around here and then uh, on this hill there's going to be trees that require no water that love drought or desert type conditions they'll be up on the higher point of this hill and then in here they can you know they can have a regular garden as we know gardens today if they want it and if not that's not a big deal either but eventually they're gonna have to get some trees in here as well because the trees drop the leaves which produce the topsoil which produce the nutrients and minerals and stuff that the plants need to grow and so everything works together and so this is what it looks like at this point and there's still a lot of work to do but you know the only time we go in here and do the work is when the money when when they bring in the money so that we're able to to uh, pay for the fuel and and what have you to, to continue the work and there's a lot of work still to be done over here and down in here and there's gonna be another pond in here this is all gonna become a complete and utter food forest just trees and stuff of that nature eventually again as as, as the money is available uh, to buy the fuel and the trees and the, the various things and to get this land uh, back to living at this point this land is alive okay this over here is dead they're farming it every day don't worry you know and they're producing these non nutritious uh, plants and you know uh, tomatoes and what have you corn whatever it, but it's non nutritious it's all chemicalized it's all all that kind of stuff is all worthless the earth is gets keeps getting scarred they're losing all their topsoil uh, into this this here little creek which feeds into the river you know everything's just being totally lost and so anyways guys uh, you know return to the garden if you can't afford land that's fine find someone that can team up with them restore the restore the earth start restoring things guys stop depending on government stop depending on Walmart and various different corporations for your food because it's all poisoned it's all got chemicals in it it's all malnutritious you know why is everybody getting sick and diseased and arthritis and all these various things that are going on with everybody it's because they're getting non-nutritious food there's no nutrition in any of the food the earth is dead guys the earth is dead it has to be restored anyways this is what I've been doing this is why I haven't really had the opportunity to get out here and to make these videos uh, we've been recreating the garden of eating it is absolutely a astonishing the abundance that that this I mean midst of a drought and there's you know feeding entire towns unbelievable while everybody else is running out of water this land is it, it has all the water it could possibly need it's abundant in water it's abundant in food it's abundant in animals it's abundant I mean it's just abundant guys and it's succulent succulent food full of water full of nutrition and when you take a bite of the fruit or a bite of the vegetable it doesn't even come close to what's in the stores the stores fall dramatically short they have no flavor no nothing compared to real food real fruit full of nutrition full of mineral full of amino acid uh, full of 
all the various things, uh, antioxidants and so forth and so on. Okay, totally and completely and utterly different than anything you can buy in the store. When people come out here and they take a bite off of an apple from from this drought inflicted area here, that's just this place is just prospering, unbelievably. I mean, what Father is doing is just absolutely incredible. Anyways, guys, th th this is to give you an idea of what Father's doing here and now, right here locally. And not only that, when people come out here, you know, we're we're out, we're out there working and stuff, and and people come out and they take a bite of the, they just they're just blown away. They're like, oh my goodness, this is so succulent. This is amazing, you know. And then we have the opportunity to come in here and say, well, here's what Father has to say, and you know, we uh, Adam sinned, and through Adam, all have come under sin, and uh, through Messiah. Uh, Mashiach as he came in you know all have been freed all many have been freed but all have been freed if they'll receive it and everybody's able to re go back to restoration back to abundance back to prosperity back to succulent back to uh, you know just amazing amazing stuff I love you guys get in the word stay in the word look if I don't put another video out ever again guys just get in the word read it ask father what is it you want me to do here and now what do you want me to do? And he'll, he'll, you know, you may have to ask him 15, 20 times. He wants to know, are you serious? Do you really want to know what Father wants you to do? Or are you just all about you? Okay? And so once you, but my point is this, guys. It is finished. That's what he said. And, and Father said to the Son, sit here at my right hand until I have made all your enemies your footstool. And so he's not returning until his enemies are made his footstool. So, don't be deceived in these days, guys. Don't worry about these so-called planets that are headed our way. There's no planet headed our way. Uh, we may get hit by a comet at some point, at some time, but don't worry about it until it's imminent. At this point, there's no imminent comet coming, and there hasn't been, even though everybody's been making up things, trying to say that they are that it is imminent. It's not. Okay, Scripture's clear about what's going to happen. Just read it. And don't let people tell you what it says. You go read it so you know what it says, so you know what's coming, regardless of what lies and deceptions people put out there. I love you guys getting the word. Stay in the word. Understand that the weather has is still way out of control. Things are, st I mean, look at, look at Indonesia, the, the volcanic activity, the flooding. Look at the Philippines. And I'm just look around your globe, guys. Look around. Earth is in severe travail. We have killed her. And she is going to be reborn. She is being reborn. She is going through birth pains right now. She's going through travail right now because of what we've done to her. And because of our disobedience to our Father who is in heaven. I love you guys getting the word. Stay in the word. Get in the word, guys. And you guys stay in that word. Every day you should be in there. Just at least 5-10 minutes. You know me, I'm in there for about an hour or two. Every mo every night, and about uh, you know half hour in the morning, and, and then throughout the day, off and on, and um, you know doing things such as this right here gives you the ability to get out here to preach the gospel, to tell people the good news, and to prepare them for the things that are coming, the real things that are coming, not 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 the hype and the other stuff that's going to be happening. I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, I I'm trying, guys, to get these videos out. I just right now, I just haven't had between this. And uh, helping people build, um, I'm you know I'm a carpenter. I've been a carpenter all my life, you know. So I also help people build like buildings or houses or shops or whatever they need, you know, underground uh, facilities and so forth and so on. Whatever's got whatever people need, you know, I help them do that as well. And at the same time, I have the opportunity to preach or to 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 share with them the good news of the gospel. And so. Uh, right now, Father's got me doing everything locally and not really putting out anything on the internet to the, to the world at this point. But be patient, and I'll be back to putting out videos as soon as I can. And, um, you know, 
I love you guys so much, and I just, I, you know, just get in the word, guys. Don't depend on me to give you the truth, and don't depend on anybody on YouTube or on the news or your government or your your, your local preacher to give you the, the truth. Go in there, read it for yourself, see what it says, understand it, ask, pray about it, so that he'll give you understanding, so you know what's going on, okay? So you can prepare and, and do what you got to do for what's coming okay because there's a lot of changes going to be happening and they're going to happen so rapidly and so out of the ordinary you know people are going to be caught off guard and be taken out and well that's what scripture says is going to happen anyway it's going to happen just as he talked about the flooding just as he talked about the earthquakes just as he talked i mean he told you everything that's going to take place if you just go read it okay guys i gotta get off here i love you get in the word stay in the word i'll talk with you guys as soon as i possibly can May Father bless you all with what you need, not necessarily what you want, but may he bless you with what you need. I'll talk to you guys soon.